We're seeing our first reactions to major new developments in the ongoing saga over the CTS Superfund site. The state lawmakers just approved a bill allowing those affected by contamination to sue CTS. This is in, the, in spite of Monday's ruling by the U.S. Supreme Court. News 13 investigative reporter Mike Mason is live at a community meeting that started just moments ago. Mike, this is big news for a lot of people there. Oh, it sure is, Darcel. It's very big news, and you can tell by the number of people who showed up to the meeting. Take a look inside. It's a packed house. More than 100 people have showed up, and the meeting is just about to get underway. The focus of the meeting was supposed to be on the cleanup efforts at CTS and the toxic vapors that prompted three families to evacuate their homes, but now a new bombshell. A bill approved by the House today supports residents affected by CTS, and it says the Supreme Court made a big mistake. Days after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled residents could not sue CTS for contamination, lawmakers are firing back. This morning, North Carolina's General Assembly voted unanimously to approve a bill revising the state's 10-year statute of limitations. This after the Supreme Court ruled Monday that states can limit the time victims have to sue a company. This new bill would remove the 10-year limit for those affected by groundwater contamination. It sounds to me like the General Assembly is saying, we appreciate you looking at this. Uh, but that's not what we think, that's not what we mean, and we're setting the record straight. Changing the law. And so be it. Former State Representative Charles Thomas says if the bill gets full approval, the suit against CTS in similar cases will likely move forward. And hopefully this will let people know uh, that they're not helpless. They do have some options now. This news comes two days after EPA and public health officials met with residents of the Hidden Valley subdivision. Hey guys. How are you? Good, how are you? Residents there were concerned about recent vapor testing nearby, showing high levels of TCE in the air. But many of their questions went unanswered. Who, who at the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services said you could not speak on the record? I just need their name. I'm going to find out. Thomas hosted the meeting after toxic vapors prompted officials to evacuate 13 people last Friday. Residents now want similar testing at their homes. We're still trying to work out the details and plan it. TCE vapor levels have been high for years, but EPA's Region 4 office never regulated it until last Friday. In 2008, when we did the sampling, we also had elevated concentrations in the air then. The toxicity standards for TCE have changed. So the concentrations they got back then were okay. Now science has evolved and we're realizing that, you know, now it's an issue. The new regulations state TCE in the air cannot be over two micrograms per cubic meter. For instance, when the EPA tested for TCE vapors in 2008, the level was 8.6. News 13 tested last year and we found higher levels of 21. And last week, they were 16. That's eight times higher than the new limit prompting three families to evacuate. The TCE in vapor is more toxic than people previously thought. Dr. Jeff Wilcox says the EPA has only tested TCE in the air for a 24-hour period, but testing must be conducted over a period of months to really gauge the levels. That take those variables into account, that take wind direction, wind speed into account, and we're hoping to be able to start doing that uh, on our own if EPA can't do that. And as you can see, the meeting is underway. And just a moment ago, it was announced that this room is over capacity. They have too many people, and they're going to have to reschedule another follow-up meeting. So a lot of people did show up. And just so you know, the bill that was introduced was proposed by three state representatives, including Tim Moffitt. It will then go to the House floor, the Senate, and if it's passed and approved, it will go to the governor's desk, hopefully by Monday. And just a few moments ago, I saw a letter that Kay Hagan, Senator Kay Hagan, wrote to the EPA demanding immediate action. So the political pressure is mounting in this case, and you can count on us for the latest developments. Reporting live at the Skyland Fire Department, Mike Mason, News 13.